Two, one, two, three, four. All set? Okay. Okay, this is the second of two um, joint Board of Select and Board of Finance meetings for the purposes for the purpose of reviewing the capital budgets of various departments in town. Tonight is uh, Wednesday, December 5th, and uh, the first uh, capital budget presentation is the Parks Department. Adam? Good evening, everybody. Hi, Adam. Hello. Let's start off, we're going to start off, hopefully we're all on order here, with the irrigation at Center Field. Mm -hmm. Everybody have that? Mm -hmm. So you've got 10,000 each year for, for five years. Um, how does that work? If, if, if you need to fix the system, how do you system, do it? system last year uh, was pretty dry out. We had many, many leaks of the pipe, you know, the main pipes in the ground. Uh, this year we had approximately about 10 to a dozen leaks. Um, like I said, it's 27 years old or better. I don't know how old it is. I have no records of it. And it's just black poly pipe in the ground. Um, and that's every time we, not every time we run the sprinkler system, there's a leak somewhere. Uh, so are you going to change one section at a time? Is that the way I'd like works? to change the whole system. Oh. Um, it was improperly put in for one reason because of that, is we're watering the shady areas and the areas that need the water. I can't change that because it's on each individual zones. And basically, you just, you know, you're watering areas that don't need it. I can't put enough water on, you know, the dry spots, and the other spots are getting saturated. So are you going to do it in FY24 as we collect the money? I mean, or? I'd like to do it as soon as possible, but that's, you know, you said stretch it out, so I'm trying to stretch it out and trying okay. to. Okay. We'll have to talk about it. But. Okay. So you feel that to replace it in its entirety would be $50,000? Approximately 50000 okay. Yep. City this water. Is center field is which I'm just right, right down here, the complex right down by the tennis courts. Mm -hmm. um, Two fields. You play, you play soccer too, right? Soccer, yeah. baseball, um, softball. That's about it. Yeah. Um, the next page, I've always asked for to install irrigation system at West River. I'd like to just cut that from just void this. We don't need it. There's a lot more important things that we could uh, tackle. We've lived with this, you know, for years since I've been here for 19 years. So, yeah, it's, I go down there for softball games, and it stays pretty green. It I stays mean, pretty green, yeah, especially good, this year. Last year was a little yeah. different, but we're yeah. surviving. Biggest so. problem is the is the geese. <laughs> so it's out. I like to take it out. That's out. Okay. The third one is the groomer. That's my bread and butter for grooming the baseball fields. You know, it's approximately 20 years old when, when time to replace this. It's it's just about had it. Um, we can't do without this piece of equipment. This is, like I said, this is our bread and butter. That so will you, make, will you make it till then? I hope so. Okay. You know, it's next year, I mean. An emergency request. I mean, this, like I said, you know, it, mm -hmm. this, is, this is how we shine. The kids love it. The parents love it. The leagues love it. Everybody loves it. You know about Acorn Hill, train, uh, the ball field up here, how beautiful it looks year in and this year out. This is the thing that, like, it, it says a rake in the back, yes. and it goes, does circles, and it grooms the field, takes yeah. all the divots and, you know, the footprints out of it, yeah. and yeah. smooths it out, then we line it, and we approximately use it every day. Yeah. It's um, a safety thing, too. Oh, definitely yeah. a safety thing. Yeah. So. You play the YMCA when you do it? I'm sorry? <laughs> you play YMCA when you do it? Yeah. That's your Y watch. The next one's the tennis courts. The tennis courts are not doing well. Okay. Um, there's, there's many, many cracks in there, and they're getting worse and worse and worse. Um, we need to do this um, to prolong it. Um, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's, you know, there's cracks, the paint's peeling, and it's a safety issue for one. I mean, the, one, the number two tennis court has a massive crack in it, um, along with the other courts have... Who does this kind of work? Uh, Hinding. Dalton, so he's put it out to bid, and you go from there. Okay. We the did last it. Last time something like this was done. 
about six years ago, six, seven years ago. It's nice, you know, they come in, they, they power wash it first, and then they seal the cracks as, uh, you know, some caulking and some other tape, um, and then they paint it, and then line it. Um, all the courts for 16000 Sure. Really? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let's see the parks. One of the parks pickups that we have. Um, I just is on the list for you know long term. Um, to let you guys know that eventually we'll be needing it uh, when the time comes. Uh, I'll critique the you know the year as it gets worse and or you know as time goes. But I, I want to let you guys know that you know that's in there. All right. Okay. Is this something that's available on state bid? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, the dugouts. Um, I don't know if you guys know. We did the dugouts down at West River, and it's everybody's loving it. Um, the dugouts where everyone sits, you know, plays, you know, sits their bags down and their baseball bats, all their gear, and they sit in the dugout. The ones down here, they're, you know, if it rains, they're sitting in a mud hole. It's gravel. It's tough to weed whack. It's just, you know, it's a good thing to do. And we've budgeted for it, and now we're in the process of doing it right now. And that's where we're at. Is this for one field or two fields? It'll be both fields. Both fields. Yep. And that'll that come. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Any questions for Adam? No. So, I'm, for instance, the uh, the F three fifty pickup. Yep. On the state bid. So we can replace that a new truck for thirty five thousand dollars. Certainly. Yeah, it doesn't have the you know the plow. We don't need a plow on it. Um, it's just trailers around the mowers, the groomers, whatever our crew. Um, that's it. No bells and whistles. Heavy brakes, heavy transmission, heavy right. duty truck. Okay. Just seemed like 2023. Huh? I said I wonder if it'll be that in 2023. Well, it's not, it's it's not, not a big monster. Pickup. No, it's right. Just, it's it's any pickup. Pickup. No, it doesn't have the crew cab. It just has the one yeah. cab. But the 350s are heavy. <coughs> They're cheap. They're cheap. You know? Especially on state bid. If you don't have anything in them, they're cheap, I guess. Right? What's that? If you don't have a lot in them, they're, they're Yeah, I mean, you can put strobes, uh, alarm systems, uh, bed liner, uh, different interior, automatic this, automatic that. Uh, we don't need that. You might put some strobes on it, say, if a, we need it for the public works to go on the road. You know, we might put strobes on it. About it. But we could do that in our operational budget. So just to make sure I understand, as far as the um, center field yep. concrete dugouts that you mentioned, the last yep. one, the $8,000 set, you said you were doing that now, or yes. is that for next year? We're doing budget? it right now. We're tearing them apart and going to be digging them out soon and okay. putting a footing in for gravel and then we pour concrete on it and put the fence back up. Okay. That's it. That's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Have a good night, everybody. You too. Thank good you. night. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right. Next is building maintenance. Good evening, everybody. Good night. Those of you don't know, Adam's my brother. <laughs> you got it. I got it. I, I nailed this for two years. <laughs> a, B. I no Keep them in that order. A, a and then B. I got a haircut. Thanks to Karen. Just so you yeah. know. Thanks to Karen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I still can't. Very easy. I can never. Brad is blonde. No, I, I know, I know. I just can't put the name to it. Brad, it's still That's how that's how Karen got me to figure it out. I never knew who they were. Okay. The floor is yours, sir. The first item for fiscal year twenty is five thousand five hundred dollars for the old South School repainting. You all see that on the first page. That's one on Johnson. That's one on Johnson, Johnson Road. Johnson Road. Yeah. yeah. So I really, really took a hard look at that and reconsidered that, and I'd like to tell you to scratch that off. Right. I'm going to do that within my operating budget. All right. I can do that. <laughs> the next page is human services. If we could skip that. Oh, the senior center remodel. The senior center remodel. Just yeah. completely skip that. Okay. The next item will be FY21, which is phase two of the air conditioning system at the library. Okay. We're in the process of phase one. Yeah. And uh, public begin, spring. To begin this spring. Yeah. And if everything works out well, then we can continue.
control the humidity, there will be no need for phase two. Oh, good. Boy, this how old is, is, the, how old is the, new li the new library? The new library? <coughs> Ballpark-ish. Uh, I can't remember. Nine, 19, what? Yeah. It's not new anymore, is it? 1999? Yeah. 2000. Yeah. It is. Wow. Yeah, phase yeah. one is out of the trust Phase one yeah. is out of the... <coughs> Noise, right? Noise. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So that'll start first thing in the spring. Okay. FY22 is also a vehicle for building maintenance. Just to keep you updated that eventually we'll need a, a new vehicle for building maintenance. There's 117,000 miles on the vehicle right now. Okay. We'll keep driving it. <laughs> The other items in 22 were uh, roof repairs to the town hall. I look at the roof at the town hall constantly, at least every couple of months I'm on the roof, and I make a decision of what year to put it in, and if I can push it out, I'll push it out. The roof is in really good condition. There's nothing wrong with the shingles on the roof. The flat section of the roof I've looked at many times. No, no leaks. leaks no. Nothing. I got rained on. <laughs> <laughs> At your house or here? Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Air conditioning. <laughs> Air conditioning. You were sitting here and there's water. <laughs> Where is this yeah. coming yeah. from? AC, not a Bubbling up problem. from the ground? No. <laughs> the ceiling. Okay. Uh, <laughs> FY23, I put the hardwood floor refinishing for the center gymnasium, which is pretty important. Eventually, it'll, it's wearing really bad eventually it come to a point in time where we'll start to have to repair the wood itself there's virtually no finish in some areas it'll hold up for a couple more years but at some point we have to address sanding and relining the wood floors repainting them and refinishing them and this one this one too it's, it's important yeah. you begin to damage the floor itself sure uh, and that's it any questions for Brad? Just out of curiosity, did he skip the modeling? Yeah, yeah, he said to. The, the, we are part of the next. Oh, okay. yeah, they're next. Here. You're here okay. for that okay. section. Right. Thank you. <coughs> did, did, yeah. Yeah. Brad, there are some issues with the center building over by the gym. There were some leaks in the roof, and there was a bathroom, and there was a water fountain. Yeah, the bathroom we repaired. Okay. We had to re redo the entire floor right down to the structure to the actual beams themselves. It had been rotting long since I started here, so we restructured the whole floor itself, and it took a while to do, but that's done. Okay. The drinking fountain, we're gonna eliminate completely. Okay. There's a drinking, I think, uh, a bottle of water for the gym, and right. human services has bottled water, so I no, no need to put a drinking fountain in. And I'm not aware of any roof leaks in the center building. Well, there was staining on the on the tiles, on the ceiling tiles, in uh, three places. Whereabouts is this? Um, one was near the, the one was near the corridor going to the school um, area. Mm -hmm. uh, one was, I think, in the bathroom corridor. One was in the main corridor. We had problems with the sprinklers up above. The sprinklers, yeah, up, which have been repaired. But like inspecting this roof, we have an attic to <coughs> most of the old center building over there. That's inspected regularly. The dry system is up there, so we'd like to ensure that there are no problems with the dry system whatsoever. But we did have problems with the sprinkler, but that's been repaired. Okay. Yep. Um, as long as you're here, the Board yep. of Ed is coming in in a while. Are you involved at all with the pool, with that? Dectron? Yeah. Only to assist the school and whatever they need. Okay. They need help, questions answered, or the, the facilities guy is on vacation or he's sick. Okay. I'll stand in for them, but the repair, that's all the school. They're doing that? Okay. Yep. Very good. All right. Anything else? Merry Christmas. Thank you. You too, everybody. Happy New Year. Good evening, everyone. How are you? I have Susan Davidson. She's a member of the Human Services Commission and also served on the design committee. Oh, right here. Two other commission members, Mary Lee Sapshin and Jan Charliglio, and shortly Sharon Bender, our chair, will be coming. Um, first of all, I'd like to start out by saying we had a design committee working with Silver Petroselli. These are plans, and I'll explain. Yes, here. 
Thank you. Um, our design committee was made up of Betsy Yagla, Sharon Bender from our commis commission, Susan Davidson, Jane Galertner, who is a resident of Woodbridge and also an architect, uh, Jeanette Glix Glixman, and myself. Uh, we do have a preliminary <coughs> budget. We met late yesterday afternoon with Silver Petrus Selling. Um, but what we want to do is review the budget and present it in January um, with our operating budget. Um, we feel, and we met with Brad today, I met with Brad, and after reviewing it, we feel that we can make some reductions on the budget. So we don't want to hastily uh, submit it, but we want to meet, look it over, and um, we feel that building maintenance can help us probably reduce the budget. Um, so it was a very positive meeting that I had with Brad today. Um, we feel that these plans will meet our goals and objectives in providing programs and services to older adults in Woodridge to reduce isolation, <coughs> increase opportunities for socialization, and enable the elderly to remain physically and mentally active. Just Google the words isolation, depression, and seniors, and you will see countless studies regarding both mental health and physical well-being. According to a study at the National Academy of Sciences, both isolation and loneliness are associated with a higher risk of mortality in adults age 52 and older. And I will tell you, elderly everywhere suffer from illness, loneliness, and many of them from depression. They're not a generation that speak up about it, but they do suffer from it. So by providing these positive um, programs and socialization and nutrition, it helps them really live longer. During the construction, as we experienced moving our programs elsewhere, we heard from so many of our participants <coughs> and attendees that they were grateful for the improved locations where programs are being held temporarily right now. Our director, who still is fairly new, has demonstrated high energy in developing the program for older adults in addition to bringing the community together with programs like the cafe, the antique road show, and all of you, many of you participated and came to the Living Treasure fundraiser. I wanna say for her to be successful and for us to be successful, she needs the tools um, to complete the job of servicing those 55 and over in our community. Um, many older adults are active and wish to remain engaged in this community instead of going elsewhere. And sometimes people say, oh, I went over to Orange because it's so nice over there, or I went to this senior center. But as they get older, it becomes more and more difficult for them to even travel out of town. Um, we hope that you will join our community members in supporting this project, which I'm gonna just go over and highlight, and Susan has some words too to say. But this project will modernize the Woodbridge Center to be well utilized in an inviting space for everyone here in Woodbridge. I'll turn it over to Susan. Uh, and then what I'd like to do is just highlight some of the wonderful um, ideas that came about through our design committee. I am happy to be here tonight in support of the project. I lived in Woodbridge for 47 years, and uh, I don't want to leave Woodbridge. I really don't. And uh, I think I'm representative. Um, I represent uh, a large segment of the population. I have put together a few words here. For all of you, uh, members of the Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance, as the population of 55 and over residents in Woodbridge increases, currently it is 35% of our total population here in Woodbridge, and participation in new programming increases, we, are at, we as a town need to do a better job of meeting the needs of older adults in town. Just as we have always met the needs of our younger population, with an outstanding school system, which happens to be the reason why my husband and I moved here 47 years ago with two young children. We came for one reason and one reason only, 
the school system. We could have lived other places, but that's why we moved here. <clears throat> These past few years have brought new innovative programming to seniors at the Woodbridge Center in spite of the fact that the center has not been renovated or brought up to date for more than 40 years. I have a daughter who's 53 and a son 50. Both of them went to center school. It looks exactly the way it used to look. Actually, not as nice. The current center is shabby and woefully inadequate for the population it serves. In fact, the entire center building has been neglected for years, in my opinion. I urge the boards of finance and selectmen to financially support this much needed and long overdue plan. The overall, overall plan is in phases, so it, could be, it can be funded in phases. As the project unfolds, we hope to provide opportunity for residents to donate to the Woodbridge Center renovation. I was on the Library Commission a long time ago. As a matter of fact, Beth and I served on it That's together. That's how we met. <laughs> That's how we met. Yep. So. And um, that project in the beginning really took something for us to get it off, you know, airborne. And then many, many people in town were very, very happy to donate to the project and be part of it. It was something that they didn't want to be left out of. And my wish is that that will happen to this project. That if you help us get it off the ground and support it in phases, that it will take on a life of its own. And the dream that a few of us have will be a dream for everyone. Okay. I do want to mention the preliminary <coughs> budget as it stands now uh, does fit into the projected budget under the building maintenance. Um, the figure does fit under there. Um, I just want to review with you the plans. Um, phase one would be in the dotted area on your plan. It would be coming into the stairwell and entering the senior center through the existing door. This would be a reception area. If anyone knows where the code area is, that would become a reception area. And what they would do is move the senior center door up a little bit. And then you have the lounge here. Um, a closet would go here so that everything is put away, look, looking very organized and neat. We have <coughs> tables that are just piled up um, for a bridge. We have 12 to 13 tables because on Mondays we have 48 people who come in and play bridge. There would be a closet to put that equipment away. In the diagram, the brown here would be built-in cabinets. The TV would be in this area where there are bookshelves now, and that would be built in. Um, we would be purchasing new chairs and tables. The tables might look something like that. The chairs will not have wheels, though. Um, but this is something similar to what's in the meeting room at the library right now. Um, let's see what else I can tell you about that. The ramp would come in over here. Um, and so there would be new furniture in this particular room. In addition, this office, which has been reduced because of the restroom that's being <coughs> constructed now, would be kept and would be utilized for several uh, instances. For one, the VNA nurse, when she comes in right now, it is not confidential at all. She's taking blood pressures, talking about other people's health concerns in the lounge with other people around. That would take place right in this office. Our drivers, as they come in, I will tell you, be more efficient for our employees, especially for our clerical assistant. Um, now they're in the same office. This way, the drivers can go in here and do their paperwork because there's a lot of statistics that <coughs> we have to hand into the state when we receive a state grant for the vehicles. So they have to go in, finish their paperwork so that we can do our monthly reports. Um, and thirdly, our social worker, because her office is located up in the front of the building and you have to take the elevator up, go all the way down the hallway. For those who are disabled, they can um, meet with her right here. And also the income tax assistant volunteers are up on the second floor. 
Um, they will remain up there, but if we have somebody who's disabled, it's very, very difficult. Sometimes we go down and pick them up in a wheelchair, even though they're not exactly wheelchair bound because it's just too far for them to walk. So we can utilize this office um, for many cases, including even volunteers. Um, so this area again, that has the dot and line in this area would be phase one. Phase two would be the cafeteria. And we even thought about having, see how it's shaded beige and then the darker floor? This way you would come in and come right to the reception area and perhaps we'll keep this a different color too to come right down to the, to the kitchen. Um, right here we would be putting a counter with built-ins so if people come in with laptops they can use it right there. Um, we would have some smaller cafe tables here and also here along the windows where they are in the cafeteria so that if people want to sit there get something uh, to eat they can sit there with a laptop also and plug in. Now, one of the ideas that we actually got from North Haven, visiting North Haven, because there were about five senior centers that we visited to come up with different ideas, from the ramp through many of the ideas here. We would have a petition here, um, which is a keyed electrical petition, where the senior center would now be able to have two programs going on in the cafeteria at the same time if they want to play cards or um, have art or dance group on one side and then something going on, a lecture series going on in the lounge. We would be able to do that because so many times we're, we're offering programs and we have to look outside of our area and it's very, very difficult because our director is full-time, the uh, clerical assistant is only part-time, and it's a lot of people, I mean, to oversee at one time in programs with the phone ringing, people coming in to sign up for programs, and so forth. So we feel that this will be much more efficient, um, and this will serve our population very well. I don't know if anyone has any questions. This proposal is in addition to the new entrance way and the ramp and all that, right? That's and correct. Yes, that's Sorry. correct. Yeah. And actually, once the ramp is completed, which has been delayed to the spring now, um, the entrance way is going to be un somewhat unfinished there in the lounge. And that's one of the reasons why phase one is going to, we're going to start with the lounge we hope to what's the timeline for that what in your mind what you, what's your plan for the timeline you said start in the spring and phase one oh will go for that, no long? that's for the ramp the okay, ramp's going to be finished i did ask them if possibly the ramp can be finished in april um because it's been delayed and they said if, if whether it's proper. possible weather yeah. permitting right one point is uh, we think of ourselves as being needy but not greedy. The plan for the ramp is for egress only because there is no, there's no funding for, for an entrance that would be protected. So that, I imagine if we were to come down the ramp, first of all, we don't have staffing um, to, to monitor that all the time. And also, if you open the door, you're constantly opening the door in the lounge area. Um, mm. It's just it'd be freezing cold, so that you, you can't have that. So we don't have an elaborate ramp. It's a ramp that will that will be used for egress only. So. And once we get the ramp, we'll have emergency drills to make sure that everyone knows how to exit. We will be before you in January, and we'll have our budget. We probably will have other questions then. Um, we'll try to prepare as best as we can to answer any questions. When this goes under construction, are you going to be able to operate? Well, 
we may have, we're, I know just to paint the place, especially to paint over the brick, the chemicals they use, we are going to have to close temporarily. I do not believe it may not be as long as we're doing now, and it may only be half. You know, we may only have to close the lounge part. Doing it in phases should right. be. Yeah. Doing it in phases should be easier. Yeah. But so far, we've been displaced since the beginning of October. And even if the restroom isn't completed entirely, probably the beginning of January, Jeanette will move back downstairs. We'll bring the programs so, back. So, so where's the handicap ingress? Ingress? In. I can show you on the bigger one. Right here. So you would come down this way, and there would be the ramp. Oh, it says ramp. ramp. Oh, right there. Right there. So that's that's the ramp. So that's the ingress. Right. But there's no vestibule to hold back any cold air. No, no. I, I'm sorry, but when Susan said egress, I didn't. It's ingress and ingress. You're coming right. in and out. Yes. There. But no. They're not going to use it to no. come in. Okay. So, so where do you come in then? Well, you would come in either the stairwell or those who are disabled you still have to come down the elevator. But in an emergency situation, they would be able to leave right from the ramp and exit the ramp. And it, okay. it, it is because there's not enough room right there to have a vestibule. Like if you go into the library, you press the button, the door is open, but there's mm -hmm. a vestibule. Many of the stores have it that way. Oh, and so, also, we did see in West, Westbrook, oh, there are ways of handling it. Westbrook has an absolutely gorgeous way of handling it. You know, windows and, and a ramp that comes all the way down. I mean, it would involve a lot of rebuilding there. So, you know, we are trying to be very practical about the realities of life today. So that's why I said we are needy, but not, we don't think we're being greedy. We really don't feel greedy about it. And I feel I can say that since I've been a taxpayer for 47 years. And I'm just doing my <coughs> no, I think, you know, I, I, from what I've heard, I, I, I don't see there's a whole lot of opposition in this. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to get it done. Yeah. Everybody's uh, yeah. Yeah. on board. It's just a question of how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. right. But yeah. I don't think... They're, they're, it seems like they're I'm amenable not to... Everybody. Nobody's shaking their heads no. No. So. And they're amenable to yeah. phasing, yeah. which is clearly yeah. Yeah. So we'll get helpful to One way or another, we'll get it done. Right. And I do believe, I really believe that once it gets off the ground, that we are going to... Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, great. Sure. Yeah. What? Yeah. what about we applied grades? for one previously, but we haven't... Seems to yeah, unfortunately, the year we applied for it, Joe, it was the steep grant. That's when they put a hold on the funding. We didn't even submit it but they put a hold on the funding. And once this is firm, we do plan on meeting with Sheila, too, to see if there's any grants that, you know, she can come up with. We go to the community organizations. As you know, we were pretty successful with the Living Treasure Award uh, dinner. Um, and we'd like to, you know, continue to work together. And I think the community will. Mm -hmm. The other thing is we see this not as a senior project, but a community project, sure. because for as long as I've lived in Woodbridge, there's never been a place to sit and have, you know, and when you talk about, you know, a place to plug in your cell phone or something, I mean, that's, that doesn't cost a lot of money, and it's pretty neat, and I know that the town is engaged in thinking about benches, we have a garden that's being planted, benches <coughs> by the library where people can sit, I mean, it really, a sense of community, and I know that the library was oriented in the way it is too so that it would it would envision more of a sense of community. You so want to I hang around till 815 you'll hear my budget. I'm doing a lot of ideas with town beautification. It's the center. It's very important to me. So yes. yeah so I think it sort of yep. dovetails. You don't have to stay till 815 I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> How's the kitchen? Is there any need to do anything to the kitchen? Um, there is. We do need painting in <coughs> the kitchen and in this it shows a new cabinet um, back here in the lower kitchen. <coughs> That's included, new built-in cabinet. And also, there is a small window there that people put the trays through. Yeah. If we find um, that the cafe is 
successful and something we're going to continue. We'd like to open up the window there and make it wider so people can put trays through on one side and they don't have to walk into the kitchen area um, to purchase food. The, the only reason I ask, not the only reason, but one of the main reasons I ask that is <coughs> at times we tend to <coughs> make decisions and do renovations and then two years later we need <coughs> renovations to the renovations. So whatever you need, I think we should have in Thank this you. plan, and then that's my own opinion because you know you don't want to spend three hundred and sixty-five thousand and do this, and then two years later say, "Come back." I need fifty thousand for the kitchen. Well, why didn't we do that two years ago? Okay. That's all I'm saying. So. Most of the appliances are fairly new, so they wouldn't really be included in the plan at this point. I'm not looking to spend but, more money. I'm just no, saying, I know if, what you're saying. The if, if, if there's a need, then we ought to recognize it all at once. Once, okay. And then decide all at once. You know. Point well taken. Okay. Any questions on the <coughs> renovations? Is this moving under human services and out of building, or is it staying in the building? No, we're no, we're give it there. Yeah, we're human services. We go on to the yeah, go on to your next. Uh, okay. We also have Sharon with us, Sharon Bender, our chair. Um, I just want to pass it. Just take it. Good evening, everyone. Pardon my lateness. First of all, um, Jeanette Glixman, our director, cannot be here t this evening, but I do want to come in. She did a nice chart for you, which shows the transportation <coughs> statistics going up, uh, fiscal year 2017 versus 18, so it'll be 1617 versus 1718, the one that ended in June. And as you see in the red, that's just the year 18. So our transportation has increased. Why? Why? Could be, well, some of them, it seems that we're doing more medicals right now, for one. We're doing a lot more medicals. I mean, it's almost double. I mean, and it could be people aging and, you know, just not driving as much due to their health, giving up a car, which is a very difficult thing to do. But I will tell you, especially here in Woodbridge, being so rural, um, and I've been on the board of directors at Greater New Haven Transit District, I strongly commend our transportation program um, because without it, in, in Greater New Haven Transit does pick up where we can't for some of the transports, especially they do a lot of dialysis, Saturday, Sundays, um, they do social events. If somebody wants to go into New Haven for dinner or the theater, they can do that. But with our <coughs> program, you know, we're able to pick people up to go to the doctor. They have to go to the bank to get money to pay for a prescription. And being in a town that only has a bus, the transit, uh, the re regular Connecticut transit bus that comes up to JCC, and believe me, we have tried to get the bus to come up further through the town because if we did, then Greater New Haven Transit would provide uh, much more transportation for those who are disabled because they have a couple programs. But it, it's really an important program to keep our seniors here in town. Um, we have put in the budget. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. The numbers reflect the amount of times the vehicle actually goes to pick somebody up, not the number of people. Right, times. In other words, each time, and what we ended up doing over the years is doing the same thing that Greater New Haven Transit. What you see here, these numbers are for a one way because a lot of times we drop people off at the doctor, they might have somebody to pick them up because they're coming home much later in the day when our bus is, is back at the lot. And um, so these are one-way transports. <clears throat> I 
Any questions on the numbers? So it's potentially more. If you're going round trip. Well, the round trip would be included. In oh, okay. This. It would. Be. Oh, I thought you said it was one it, way. Well, one. Well, it's one, one way there, way. and then number yeah. two would be coming back. I get you. So it's okay. 194. I got it. Okay. Or 264. Okay. And because sometimes one we way. do that one, one way, way, even yeah. when we my brother, my brother did submit trip monthly yeah. or quarterly <laughs> reports to the state, right? You know, it shows okay. one way. I understand. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I do want to mention for fiscal year 1920. Um, we do have in the budget 67000 for new vehicles mm -hmm. to replace the 2008 vehicle. Uh, we work closely with our um, mechanics down at the garage. And I, I will tell you, I get together with my colleagues compared to some of the other towns. Number one, our maintenance people have been very good, and they've saved us a lot of money. When I first started, we used to bring our vehicles elsewhere. But I'll, I'll tell you, when we're ready to go get our vehicles now, it's our job at this point to get them inspected with the um, DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles, whereas before Greater New Haven Transit used to handle all that. They go through the vehicle <laughs> very carefully um, to make sure those vehicles are in good shape. And each year, you know, we look at it, and when I met with our mechanic, we both agreed that it, the vehicle would be put into fiscal year 1920. I do want to tell you, we did apply for a 5310 grant through the Department of Transportation the last time we got a bus. We'd like to get a smaller vehicle. Um, our dream is really to get a van that we could place on the Mirror Parkway. We have to go all around, or we have the police car, our third vehicle, as backup. If we could get a smaller vehicle van, and we looked at one recently that carried four people plus a wheelchair, and we looked at some others that we thought were ideal, but they just, for different reasons, we had to rule them out. Um, we'd only go down to two vehicles then. The 12 passenger bus, which at times we do take people several times on a trip or lunch bunch, and that vehicle is filled. Um, but if we do get a van, we are going to go down to two vehicles. And the one that we looked at um, would be able to go onto the highway. It's similar to the one at Coachman Square. Um, but, yeah, they have a four passenger, one wheelchair hookup vehicle. Um, that would be the best thing. We we're also looking at an eight passenger vehicle and one of our concerns, it's a big concern, is in the dr driveways of many of our residents, you can't get that big bus in there easily or out. So that's why we, one of the other reasons why we are going to go to a smaller vehicle. Okay. I don't know if anyone so this 67,000 is for an eight to ten passenger lift equipped vehicle. Well, it but could be really either. Or. I'm going to be honest with you. It could be either or. Either or, because the vans are expensive too. Much okay. to my surprise. And how do we buy those typically? Well, here's what I would suggest. It depends. Very shortly, we're going to know what type of vehicle, and you know, we'll come back to you on that. It, if it's something that qualifies, we, we are checking out funding through 5310 grant money again. And I've already been I in touch that. with them. And they're going to notify us. They told me December, January, but it's probably going to, my guess is, be more after the holidays. And we will research that. Um, it has become much more competitive now than the last time we applied. Um, but if we do get a grant, and you may say, well, you're, applying, you're asking for the funding now. What happens is we apply for the grant in 2019, and then they'll approve it. We need the money in the budget for 1920, but you don't actually receive the vehicle. Usually it's after July of fiscal year 20, so it could be in the following year if you're following me. So it could be any time from next fiscal year to two years that we actually receive a vehicle vehicle if it's from a grant. And this 2008 vehicle, what, what 
Maybe, maybe I missed it. I'm, I That's apologize. Okay. What, <clears throat> what type of vehicle is that? That is a 12 passenger, two wheelchair hookup. And that vehicle, at first, years ago, we did get it through a grant. With, it was a federal grant with Greater New Haven Transit. But then they were selling all their vehicles. So we do own that vehicle. So the town would be able to auction off that vehicle. Okay. We've had some How issues miles with it. it There's about 60000 but I will tell you, we did spend over $1,000 on air conditioning this year. We had to get the part from Florida. And in addition to that, when we went to bring it to be inspected, twice it didn't pass because of rotting underneath the vehicle. And our maintenance people had to correct that. Okay. Any other questions on transportation? Okay, and then in fiscal year 21-22, we're requesting $47,500, and that's for a carport, um, which would be similar to the design that's going up in the police department, and that would be over at the center building. You know, we've been in contact with everyone from public works director to people that are utilizing the old firehouse to see when it snows is there any place that we can put our vehicles um, and there really isn't so we put it there in that fiscal year and I know you're going to have to take into consideration you know the project that we talked about earlier the vehicle and so forth but it would help maintain the vehicles <coughs> How many vehicles do you have now in total? Two buses and then one car. It's the old police car. So it's three. Right. Have you spoken to the police department about utilizing two of their, three of their bays and then a carport? I talked to the chief, but I don't believe there's any room over there because he's well aware that we're interested in the carport. I don't know. Not me. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay, yep. thank you yes. very much for your time. Well, I, I'm wondering if maybe. Yeah. Oh, I, don't know, I don't know anything about the space or whether they I doubt they have room. They have so many cars. I don't, I don't know how many cars this that thing's supposed to cover. You know? I don't know. Off the top of my head. I doubt they have sp either. space for three yeah. trucks. Well, the question is how many police cars are in yeah. car in use at any time? Yeah. Okay? How many are dead storage? We could certainly review that right. with the chief. I mean, that was yeah. Yeah, let's take a look at it. And yeah. you yeah. could have a vestibule. These are, these are big right. vans. So. Yeah. But, but I did, I'm sorry, I, I, I just missed it. Where did you say this would go? In the, in the center, center parking, lot. parking lot. Like where the you guys usually parking. park right along Center Road, right? Right. In the back, so maybe there. The center parking lot. We so can park in the like further spots. Like the almost further right side. across from the firehouse. Right. Okay. Yeah. But that's that's the library parking lot. Or that's what I know that. Yeah. Uh, center. The police center parking yeah. lot. Center parking lot. Center. Yeah. Both the of ours. Right. Yeah. We share. But the police department carports are on the other that's side of that. That's correct. To the right of it. Yeah. It's a question of oh, how many spaces it's true. They, they um, have. Brad had just have mentioned something yeah. true. We need a taller um, carport be because buses. of the bus that's yeah. left. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, that's something to look at. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Board of Ed, ready? You have your crew here? Yeah, right now. Right. Right. That's the plan. Right. That's right. That is right. Thank you all. Thank you. How are you? Oh, it's not sounded like a vacuum starting up or something. Okay. <laughs> sure, no. It's been a very long day. No, no, it's okay.
I guess we refer to this thing. Yeah. Okay. He's out <laughs> Okay. How are you? Good, how are you, Good to sir? See you. Long time no see. Yeah. So thanks for inviting us, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to uh, present our capital budget request to you tonight. Um, before I even venture onto the next slide, I do want to just say a couple things. One is uh, that, uh, well, first of all, the pool's up and running. So I think that's an important one to know. So I think if you haven't heard of that already, um, we're, we're very glad that that's happening. Um, so we're not going to have a picture of the pool in this particular report tonight, in this particular plan. Um, I think we want to just make sure that we have taken stock of the past a little bit before we go ahead with the future. Um, this is a very comprehensive plan if you've had a chance to preview it all or, or take a look at any of the pages ahead of time. <clears throat> but um, It's a more comprehensive and robust plan that we have brought to you uh, in the past. Um, but it doesn't um, preclude us noticing and um, appreciating the support of the multi-million dollar project that we just came out of for Beecher Road School, which addressed so many different areas. Um, and so we appreciate that. And there's been many other ways um, and, and showing of support that the Board of Finance and Board of Selectmen have jointly given to us over the years. Um, I think it's important to just kind of step back and realize that Beecher Road School is probably um, the town's largest asset and is a good steward of that asset and um, wanting to make sure that the students are well served but also the families are well served and that the um, town residents are well served because everybody uses this building um, we wanted to make sure this year that we really took um, a different uh, approach and um, so in this past year we brought in an independent um, assessment an independent, independent consultant Jim Sisa is actually right behind me here um, and um, Jim um, is a well-known and uh, a person who has great experience and uh, um, he provided over a long haul period of time an opportunity for us to take a little closer look at all aspects of the building. Typical plans like this in the past have just had a few different uh, dynamics to them, the parking lot, the site work, and maybe one other thing, um, usually technology. Um, but that wasn't really being um, a full view of what we need to look to the future. So. Um, that comprehensive uh, independent assessment that took place uh, has resulted in this very comprehensive plan. Um, it does really give a full view of the needs. The needs continue to change. They continue to ebb and flow. Um, but I think that this really gives us and captures a much um, greater and, and truer picture of the facility in both its strengths and areas of need. Um, and I do want to thank, uh, there's many of you who are on the table tonight um, who took the opportunity in, in your schedules if you had it to uh, walk the grounds and inside the building with us um, a couple months ago. And I think that did allow us all as a group joining the Board of Education to see the needs of the building firsthand and what was on paper came to life for most of us during that walk around. So thank you for spending the time with us. So again, I do want to say thank you for the past support. Uh, we recognize that even though this is a very uh, full plan moving forward, we recognize the past and we certainly appreciate it and are enjoying it and it's a benefit to the students and the town as well. So as I move uh, into the first slide, just again, this is a, a six year horizon, basically a, a, a big look at the next six years of what we see as the capital needs 
um, for Beach Road School. Again, as I mentioned before, a much more comprehensive plan than in the past. Um, and uh, we have also, I, I want to make sure we note that you'll see window replacement is zeros right across the board. Um, still at this point in time of, of bringing this report to you, we are still really waiting for window replacement costs um, to be uh, provided to us, even though we have worked towards that end. There are, those numbers will become to light in future years. Also with flooring replacement, there are a couple of additional areas that we are again waiting for, for uh, quotes, especially areas that uh, potentially have asbestos um, underneath the carpet or underneath um, or in the tile that's underneath the carpet. And uh, so we are waiting for some of the additional quotes and they will be included in future years of capital requests. But uh, overall, this is the, the overall full plan looking forward for six years. So the capital request for this particular FY20 um, year is really we're prioritized with a focus on student and staff safety, wellness and comfort, and infrastructure, as well as preserving the investment that we already have um, as, a, as in a major uh, school building and a, and, a, and a town asset. So the next slide shows what the actual FY 2020 um, items are that we are putting forward tonight for your consideration um, for Beecher Road School. Those totals $764,000, and we'll go each, through each one of these six items briefly um, to give you an understanding a little bit about what they're all about. The first one is the HVAC temperature and humidity controls. When we constructed this particular plan, um, we did not have specific numbers from our engineering report that was on in process. So we put a placeholder number of $500,000, which was sort of a high number, um, or what was told to us to be a, an approximate high cost if we were going to need to really remove equipment or change equipment or add duct work and things like that. So that number 500 is clearly a, a placeholder number. Um, and I'll talk to you a little bit about where we've come since that time when we put that number in there. Um, as many of you know, the Ad Hoc Building Committee continues to be uh, functioning as an active um, committee to support us moving forward in the building and the facility concerns. You know there was a lot of complaints about humidity, especially this past year. There have been for the last couple of years, but this year really hit uh, a, a pinnacle of concern. Um, and so um, we did engage the services of Van Zelm Engineering to do an independent engineering study of the current system as it was designed and installed in the recent building project. Um, Van Zelm has come back with recently um, a draft um, of their um, report. They have not, have not finalized it yet, but they have a draft of a, of a finalized report. Um, some of the things that they have found is that they have verified uh, that the equipment that was installed is adequate for thermal comfort, hot, heat, and cold. Um, but it's not, um, it's not uh, what it needs to be for controlling humidity, which is no surprise, but that is something that they did verify. Um, and so there's an incremental value add that um, they have suggested and recommended that needs to take place in order to um, create the conditions that where we can control humidity and make the comfort that was originally hoped for actually come true. So there's a few things that uh, recently um, in this past week, after they did their initial draft, they actually uh, were able to draw up cost proposals um, for what it would take. Now, instead of looking at the $500,000 high cost um, possibilities, um, they have some low cost solutions that they believe um, when, when implemented can take care of our concerns. And so they have three main proposals that they have given us in this last week. Um, one is to, um, to um, look at the ERV units and um, to modify control modifications. Um, and that will help to control outdoor air coming into the building and whether it's, whether it's warm temperature or cold temperature. And that's a pro proposal of about $16,000. They have another um, cost proposal for fan coil um, unit control modifications. Uh, for $15,000 or so, and that is um, controlling units that are in more like the K-wing, D-wing, or S-wing. And then finally, they have a cost proposal um, for A-wing unit ventilators to modify and reprogram those 
for $17,000. And so um, the ad hoc committee has not had an opportunity to um, review these yet. Um, but the ad hoc committee was very excited to hear about the low cost proposals or low cost solutions um, that were being uh, discussed at our last meeting. And so we anticipate getting together soon and hopefully moving forward on these. Um, what the goal of Van Zum was, was really to take a look at this and, and, and look at these three particular proposals, put them into play, actually make the modifications, which will be doing a lot of work, adding controllers, adding sensors, doing some custom programming, things that we cannot do at this current time. Um, if these things work, and if they work, for instance, in the A wing, where we'll try it in just that one wing, we would then add it to the B and C wing. So there will be some additional costs to take that A wing program or that A wing proposal of 17,000, it would be, have to be duplicated in the B and the C wings as well. But again, um, proposals that would be far lower than um, some of the um, items, $500,000 that would have been originally um, proposed or, or thought of. There probably will be, in fact, there will be some additional costs that will be added onto this, probably at least in the neighborhood of $40,000. There's going to have to be engineering design work, um, uh, drawing up the specs for these, um, as well as a commissioning to make sure that everything is working properly um, before the project uh, would come to a conclusion. But that is the, the latest and greatest information that has come from um, our Van Zelm engineering report. Um, that brings that $500,000, at least initially, and hopefully to a much lower number, um, to try to solve the, uh, the dilemma that we've had and to add um, the incremental value that the system did not originally have a design for. improve the situation or is it to resolve the situation? It's to, re it's to resolve the situation that we do not have controls over humidity. So, so it, it, the, the system can, the system is adequate for heat, heating and cooling, but not for humidity. And so these, th these, these add-ons, these incremental values, these, these modifications would be um, dealing with that, the humidity. Understood. But for example, you said if it works in A-wing, then you look at B and C and um, other days. What's the if portion, I guess, is my, what my concern is, is just in terms of if it's an if, there's a possibility it won't work, and I'm just wondering. That, that is correct. They, they, they have clearly outlined that they believe that this is the way to go first. Um, they, they, they have said that if you wish to just not go this way, you could spend, and they haven't costed out the high-end proposal, you could just go to another, just let's redesign the system, let's add in other units, let's, let's add in duct work that wasn't there before and, and go, the sky's the limit. No, and I'm not suggesting we go that route at all. Mm -hmm. um, all, I'm, all I'm just trying to understand if it's something that we could try and then not succeed or, but I mean, they're the experts and they're the ones who I would expect would know that, that <clears> answer <throat> and that's, that's really what I'm questioning. And I think one of, the, one of the goals here was to just try, the, the unit ventilator system, which is the system that's the, um, that's the system that's most in question in terms of how it handles humidity out of all of them. Um, we didn't want to just jump in and do all three wings at the same time. We wanted to try it in one before we, we don't want to waste $17,000 per wing before we know it works in one location. So that's, that's their, that's their goal. I think that's their, their, um, basic strategy there. Thank you. Was the HVAC system contemplated in the 13.6 or whatever million So the H, so this was part of the HVAC system, Joe. And so in other words, um, a, a lot of equipment was installed um, for in that in that building project, and and they did verify that the equipment is uh, adequate, but again for heating but, but, and cooling but, purposes, but not for the right. Humidity but the design issues. did not is not sufficient for humidity. Correct. But was the scope of work that we provided to them that we wanted humidity control? Of course. Well, I th it should be, of course. Of course. I don't know. It's right. not I I I'd have, I might have to defer to one of my colleagues behind me, but I, I'm I, not. It's I, not a trick question. I, no, no, what, no, I what I'm getting at saying. is, why isn't it working, and who's and who's who's liable for the? So I don't want anybody to take. I don't want to take <laughs> this personally, but I think that they have described that you know the system that's there is adequate for heating and cooling. It was more of a bare bones system, 
and you may not like that because that's a lot of money to spend for bare bones, but the money was spent on a lot of other issues in that building, like security and glass and things like that. Right, right. But, but did we understand that we bought a bare bones uh, system, and did we understand that the system we were putting in was going to be inadequate to control humidity? Did we understand that? I think, I think, we, I think we were... My, my understanding coming in at that point uh, two and a half years ago was um, we would have more control than we actually do. So, so I guess I'm suspecting that whether whoever designed it, whoever installed it, whoever built it, we had a uh, owner's rep, John Rice. Is, uh, seems to me something went awry. So I'm wondering why we're why we're not going back and saying, who's going to fix this? And we talked about it at a, number, a couple of meetings in terms of waiting for the report, and that's mm -hmm. one of the expectations we had in terms of the report is to try to I think determine. I missed that meeting, actually, so, but, but yeah, I'm sure you did, us. but I mean... Let me, I, me just say, let me just... I, I've had a, I would suggest we wait for the ad hoc committee to finish, because they haven't finished yet, and they will be reporting to the Board of Selectmen, because I don't think that they're done yet with... Right. They haven't even seen the Van Zelm report, as I understand it, correct? Or they've seen uh, they, it preliminarily, they, but they, haven't... They, they've, re no, they've received the Van Zelm, okay. um, and we've just sent them the, the dollar amount um, mm -hmm. proposals that I just mentioned, mm -hmm. um, but they haven't had a chance to discuss them and um, take any next steps. And I, and I do understand the question, and, and there's a lot of sentiment that is shared, as you're mentioning, Joe, and, and others around the table. I will say that one, one of our, I think, philosophies moving forward was um, we do need to make sure that we have our own representation to go back once reports have been generated, once things have been verified or not verified or documented, to be able to follow back up with what we thought was what we bought. And if there is indeed a way to recoup anything, that has indeed been part of our conversations. Jerry's mm -hmm. been part of those conversations. We've had right. that on a think number we're of fronts. Completely there yet? We don't um, have all the answers yeah. so for you for tonight. Sure. No, which, which is fine. I don't you're, really you're, expect you're them all tonight. Perfectly. But at the same yeah, time, it's a good question. I don't even know that right. we should be concerned. I mean, I, I know we have to control humidity, right? But until we get a handle on Correct. all these, mm -hmm. I don't think. And we I don't think we're there yet. To, mm -hmm. So to, I think we should move on to the next. Yeah, I mean, I don't look at anybody here. Questions. Obviously, no, Bob. It's got nothing to do with anybody here. Bob came in after this project was Correct. done. You know, and, and anybody out here. I mean, we no. we we entrusted a contractor. And, and I don't think it was rep. Right. Yeah. And I don't think we ever said. I mean, I'm, the main thrust of what we did there was air quality. The air quality wasn't good. It was the envelope. We wanted air, air condition. We wanted it more comfortable. And we handed this to these contractors. I don't think we ever said, oh, by the way, we don't care if we have mold and, there's, uh, and the humidity is terrible. You know, no problem. You know, I, I don't think so. I think the, the project was supposed to incorporate all that, that we wouldn't be sitting here talking about this. So, I, I mean, I, right. I, I but guess. at some point, we have to find out. You know specifically I what happened, so. and right. we could, you know, and, and I yeah, just, and, and I guess do we have a good are we in a good process to do that? I think we are. Okay, but I'm. I, mean, I know we have this ad hoc, but it right. seems to me this is really a legal matter right now. This, could be. This is could be, and we are. Know, we're. Our, I'm not. I'm not no, denigrating the ad hoc right. or anything, but yeah. to me, we're not sure. This but is. I know Jerry Weiner's involved. The question of whether the yeah. contract and our town council was has at the adhered to, or right. whether there's a breach of the contract. Well, I mean, when you say yeah, door, door we, have we have an old door. Well, that's something we didn't talk about. Or we have a asphalt replacement. Oh, that's asphalt. But when you start talking about humidity problems and mold problems, that is something we. Basically, this project is supposed to take care of. Mm -hmm. It was an it was an air quality HVAC whatever. I, we shouldn't be sitting here, and they shouldn't be they agree. shouldn't be faced with having to pay for this, or we're going to pay for it for them. I it, agree. It, the same right. thing with the with the busted pipe. Uh, that we all thought for thirteen million dollars, we got the state of the art computerized system that when it gets a little cold, the computer shuts the uh, shuts the thing, and none of that happened. And there's a whole lot of stories out there about. One guy who had the computer computer uh, program and and went out of business and he still had it and we couldn't get it. I mean, it's it's. I just think that the, the and again, Jerry better be involved because yes, I, he is. I and, think we have to go back to the general contract and, and I, find I, out. I'm not defending anything. I'm yeah. just saying, and more importantly, right. I think going forward, once we find out the what right. and how to fix it, then we have to get the maintenance in place to make sure it stays fixed. Right? We're gonna. But for 
what we're here that. for now. We got to get. We need it right. We need an understanding, right? We need an understanding that you have put five hundred thousand dollars, and we expect it to be significantly less than that, based on the analysis that we have so far. We're ho we're hopeful, based based upon their recommendation, that we can do this for a whole lot less, okay. for sure. Thank you. Um, and but we're also taking the approach that we want to um, implement, test, and then assess: is it working? And then finish the job with that particular strategy, if that's the case. Um, so, okay. um, so, so to try this as a phase one: the ERV, the, the coil modification, and the ventilator. You're talking about. About fifty thousand dollars. So sixteen plus fifteen plus seventeen, mm -hmm. and then and then you have two other wings at seventeen thousand um, dollars, the B and the C wing that would be done after the A That's wing ventilators. That would right. be okay. after that, and then then there would be another. I'm gonna I'm gonna use a rough estimate of forty thousand dollars for the um, fee for the engineering design um, specs that have to be done, and then there is there's an importance to have a, a real full commissioning. We've discussed the, the commissioning that maybe took place, well, it did take place, and maybe it wasn't as robust as it should have been in terms of testing what we had. Um, so a commissioning uh, that really verifies the system's operations and uh, reliability uh, that would take place. So about another 40,000 that, that i um, talking about that. So Okay, 40,000 for engineering specs on the work that has the work that they're the work that this the, the, on the 16 the 50 on, the, on those, those three different kind oh, of proposals I see. I see okay so 40,000 we have to spend anyway on the... right because okay. you know, they're talking about the work that's actually going to play play out but they you need to actually have the specs written up that that um, right. describe so there's something to go back to and mm -hmm. um, right. So it's really roughly 150 in that neighborhood I haven't totaled it up actually but okay. that sounds about right it's not 500 it's not right. 500 yeah Okay. I'm going to ask. That was a nice round number. You I'm going to ask. It was a heart attack. <laughs> we still have to wait. Yeah, I'm going to ask. Wait for the ad hoc committee yeah, to finish, sure. and then everyone will get the same news report. I'm going to ask some questions that you may not know the answer to. Um, it's. It would seem to me that the unit is adequately sized if it can get the temperature down. It's adequately sized for heating and cooling. Okay for the spaces that it's installed in. And my, my understanding of air conditioning is that if the, if the unit is larger than needed, it may not handle the humidity component before it gets the temperature down. That's my understanding. And, and, and Jim could back me up here a little bit, but the size, so, so the, sizing of the, uh, the sizing of some of the um, units is exactly that at times. It may be too, it, if the unit's too big, then it, you have to control yeah, what they the, the, the speed in which the actual air is being drawn in well, so it doesn't yeah. shut off too quickly and then your humidity is, is not playing Sometimes out. Sometimes right what way. they do is they actually add heat to the cool, cooled air so that the unit can keep cycling and pull out the humidity. The second question that I had um, had to do with the controlling of outdoor air coming in. And I understand why they're doing that, but have they looked at how that might affect the air quality if they're li if they're limiting the ventilation? Jim, would you would you about to speak to that? Is on the other yeah. side. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what they'll be implementing is demand control ventilation. So instead of just a thermostat that's measuring uh, temperature in the room, which is you know a, a base problem of a unit ventilator, because as soon as the temperature is satisfied, the cooling coil shuts. You're still bringing in the outside air that you need to, uh, you know, to satisfy the code requirements. Demand control ventilation will have a, uh, a stat in the room that controls the temperature, CO2, and uh, humidity. Mm -hmm. And so, if the classroom is empty, for instance, you know, you'll be able to shut the dampers completely, bringing in no outside air. Therefore, you're not conditioning it, or you're not bringing in the humid air during that time. As soon as the CO2 levels in the room would rise, that would be the uh, prevailing um, statistic that would, you know. Um, turn up the air dampers, but uh, there will be ex additional controls on there to slow the fan way down, so the uh, cooling coil will stay open a lot um, a lot longer as you're satisfying the space, whether it be the temperature or CO2. So the controls will be, you know, a lot more complex and uh, advanced than going to temperature. Okay. What, what about the other contaminants in, in included air mold and, and off-gassing and things like that? Uh, the fresh air exchanges will be maintained to, you know, to ensure that happen. You know, the mold and the mildew come from the amount of humidity you're bringing in and not bringing out, bringing out the moisture. 
all of the units have filters on them, so provided there's a good preventive maintenance program in place, which you know, if you don't intend to make sure there is, you know, the filters will be changed, you know, be reading static uh, pressure across those and the units that are appropriate, knowing when it's time to change the filters and stop the particulates and stuff mm -hmm. that come in. Okay. Okay. Why don't you go on, Okay. So, again, just to close this page out, I want to just uh, make sure we understand that the ad hoc committee hasn't had, had a chance to discuss all of this, and they will be, and um, um, hopefully, we hope, and I and I think there's good reason to believe that oh, this low cost options will be something that um, they'll embrace and want to move forward on, and that should work and to our advantage. Uh, hopefully, never having to worry about the high cost placeholder number that was placed in this plan. I think whatever the price is, we, we need to we need to get that under control so it doesn't happen. Hmm. All I'm saying is, and again, I'm not. You guys are completely out of this as far as I. We have to go back. To the guys who designed the system and say why, why, why did we have to do this? We didn't expect to have these problems. That's part of I think when you're spending 13 million dollars to ensure good air quality, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we were expecting this. But yeah. absolutely, we have to fix it. We can't have this problem again and again. But eventually, we have to figure out you know why why it wasn't done in the first place. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Thank you for that. Uh, so the next page, uh, we move on to the next area of request, and that is on interior and exterior doors. And this is strictly to address student and staff safety and security. Um, our assessment um, found that two pairs of doors in the pool area need to be replaced, as well as the exterior doors near, near the cafeteria being replaced as well. Um, these, are, um, these are definitely a, um, a priority. There are other doors in the building um, exterior classroom doors that are um, going to be budgeted for other years in our six-year horizon overview plan um, but for now these two different areas need to be addressed um, so those are part of our pa package as well I'll move on to the next page um, a familiar slide or at least a familiar area you know that um, technology infrastructure is typically been part of our capital um, budget request this year, our request is lower than last year. It's thirty-one thousand seven hundred dollars. It really addresses um, some very just key, uh, typical areas moving forward, or um, just to continue to improve or to uh, ensure um, reliability. First one is universal power supply and switches. We need to expand our battery backup, um, so that's in involved in that. And we want to make our capacity for battery backup uninterruptible. That's what this particular expenditure would do. And then each year we need to focus on another part of the building for upgrades and wiring switches and other access points and so that amount is also budgeted all the items in this particular page are e-rate eligible uh, e-rate um, is the federal grant program for schools and libraries um, that lowers the cost um, for the items that we are implementing um, and so that summarizes what we're trying to do with infrastructure for this current year School IT organization is that they should have they should have e-rate as well. If, if no, I'm, I'm more no, concerned. Consolidation. Yes, in other no, words, no. That's software, no support. Are we this no? infrastructure? Not yet. Okay. No, the town is working with trying to consolidate all our IT to, under one umbrella. So right, um, we are doing some, we are doing some sharing with um, the high school. Um, uh, shared services under our software power school power schools our student information system and so instead of going to an outside vendor um, we are using amity um, and uh, amity has a, um, a specialist on staff and so uh, there's a shared service aspect for that that we we've started a shared service partnership in that area and so we continue to be open to how that may look in the future in other areas the next page um, the next page is not part of this capital budget plan, but I thought I would just, for consistency, just bring it forward to you just because we have in the past. This is uh, the amount of money and the page that will appear in our operating budget um, when we are looking at how do we replace um, the technology that is outdated uh, and obsolete. And so, as you know from past presentations, um, we have a replacement cycle for student computers, iPads, desktop computers, um, smaller amounts for faculty and staff, and then instructional technology that helps to continue to move us forward. 
uh, in the classroom, as well as um, prepare us for innovation for new technologies, such as 3D printers or virtual reality goggles. So again, this is not part of this plan, but I thought I would just bring it to you because it's, uh, it's something you've seen before. Next, next slide is uh, HVAC again. Um, so the building project um, focused on classrooms um, a few years ago in terms of the HVAC areas. It never decided or never purposed to focus on um, other aspects of the building that do supply heating and cooling. And so there are many ventilators throughout the building scattered in various places, corridors, vestibules, entryways, offices um, that are not part of the new system that was uh, put in place. Um, there's also older water fountains that either don't work or falling apart, and there's also um, old air fan returns in the pool mezzanine um, that are original. And so this is equipment that needs to be addressed at some point. Um, again, being a comprehensive facilities plan, um, we feel that it's um, responsible to have this as part of something that is addressed. Um, and why not address it when we are working on the HVAC and the other part of the building and to try to tie the systems together um, to, um, to make it one. So this item is included as well. Next slide talks about um, our asphalt replacement outside. Um, for this first year, um, we are looking at um, areas outside that are failing due to age or spe especially some tree root damage um, and how tree roots play havoc with the blacktop. Um, there's many hazards that are out there now. This is the original blacktop in many areas. This is really, a lot of it is the curtain walk around the old parts of the building. Um, and there's a lot of liability concerns um, and a lot of trips and falls have already taken place. Um, so, well, so, so for some of this, you can't necessarily shut it down because some of this is access, emergency access out of classrooms. I, along the classrooms, I remember seeing that. So, so we don't necessarily use those walkways on a regular basis, Unless, but, it, but on an emergency basis, getting out of a room, there's no way around it. Right. Um, and, and, and we have to clear them um, when there's um, bad weather. So snow, snow accumulates, we have to clear those. Um, so so they're not, they're, they can't be completely shut off, let's put it that way. Um, are these what infants use when there's fire drills? They have to go out to um, on the pathways? They don't actually, I'm, I'm going to ask Vito about that. Um, some, some spots, yes, like in front of the A-wing, we have true damage <laughs> to get out to the main parking lot for the A-wing classroom. So. Some classrooms do it go for some of these areas. The, the access road that you're looking at, that's how we bring the fire apparatus the road back. So that has to and then to get the kids out in the winter time, they need to clear a walkway to go up to the uh, stage by the basketball court up there and the sports. So this ninety three thousand five hundred dollars addresses that those areas of asphalt around i call it the curtain area around those those wings it certainly has impact as well on drainage um, because of the up, upheaval of some of those areas uh, drainage has been negatively impacted <coughs> and then as uh, sean just mentioned um, this ninety three thousand also includes addressing the emergency access that is that one lane that goes up along the woods past um, the a-wing to the back of the building which is greatly in, in great need very much falling apart um, so that's what this particular area addresses. And the last main area that this uh, plan addresses is, again, uh, site improvements. Um, we are still working off of the Fuss and O'Neill site needs assessment from many years ago. Um, however, we, you know, I think those of you who took the tour around the, the outside of the school as well as the inside, but the outside of the school certainly um, discovered and recognized, first of all, the size of the site, but also um, <coughs> how time has really played on the erosion, on the tree growth, um, and on the potential investment of, of what's been already going on. Just some of those pictures right there, the, the right picture on the right, uh, which is really the south part of the, um, of the school, there's the two different levels of the parking lot. You know, you come in and there's, there's the upper part of the uh, uh, south, and then there's the lower part. 
Um, many of you know this better than I do. You know when that was paved at, at, a, at a fairly high price for one of the steep grants, um, but yet we have erosion that is potentially right there um, in that hill um, that can be doing havoc to the, the, the great asphalt work that was done a few years ago. So we're trying to preserve the investment um, by making sure that we're being uh, true to the site and what the site needs. There is a lot of major erosion issues in that site. Um, and there's a lot of tree growth that has just gone unattended and needs to be, there just needs to be a lot of removal. Um, pruning is not even enough. So um, th this, is, this, is a, this is a very uh, small amount, but an important amount to continue the ball rolling ahead for what the site needs. So I have a couple more slides that I just want to address because what we have not addressed in this particular presentation uh, not budgeted for, but certainly want to continue the conversation and to uh, make sure that we're all cognizant of is the capacity of Beecher Road School. Um, we all know that we um, are in a town where people desire to come to. Um, and uh, that has been shown certainly through the growth in the enrollment over the past several years. Our recent um, demography um, presentation and report by our demographer has shown once again, that if we look out 10 more years of the future, we're going to have 126 more students at Beecher Road School than we have now. And we've already grown uh, by leaps and bounds over the last few years. Um, so capacity in a school, how many kids can you fit in the school, is dr driven by that total enrollment. It's driven by the class size guidelines which we have, which are very much um, uh, valued and respected in this town. And people um, move here because they, they like um, this, the guidelines that allow for optimum um, excellent education um, and using space for programs. Uh, programs thrive when they have their own space. Um, programs don't thrive when they don't have their own classroom or their own, or their own place to hang their hat and to deliver that uh, program that they have. So um, this is just something to keep, for us to keep in mind, but keep in mind at the front burner, not in the back burner, because the problem and the, and the challenge is here now. Um, just again, looking to the future, um, the Connecticut State Department of Education Office of School Facilities does establish space standards. Uh, their, their standards are 900 to 1200 square feet per classroom. They also obviously advocate that it's not just classrooms that we have in schools um, for just the home rooms as we think of them, but we also need rooms for everything from special education resource rooms, art studios, music rooms, science, technology, and all the other things that we, we bring to our students. So I think really as you kind of um, crystallize and think about this as you look to the future, um, and we're trying to plan ahead in this, we're trying not to uh, allow this to, to, um, to get ahead of us, we need to recognize that this school is right now at its full capacity based on our current student enrollment, based upon the staffing levels, and based upon the usage of the building. Um, so we already have one program that is without a, a space. We have a program that is delivering their instruction on a cart, going room to room. Um, student enrollment is projected to increase by 126 students over the next 10 years. That's the equivalent of six more classrooms. So that's six classrooms we don't have. Um, and we're not in the, in the business of trying to cannibalize and take a room from a program to give it to a, to a, a grade level classroom. Um, so we have, a, we have a challenge that's here right at our doorstep right now. And, um, and we need to strategize um, jointly together about that and determine how we're gonna move forward to create the space um, and to ensure the space for uh, what is a, a thriving town and a thriving school um, that is uh, trying to meet the needs of all kids. So my last slide is just again, a thank you for your consideration and your, um, and your um, questions tonight on our um, Budget request for FY 2020, totaling $764,012. Um, if there's any other further questions, I'll be glad to take them. Um, glad you asked a few along the way. I could just revisit the uh, swimming pool. Sure. Um, is, is Vito working on this? By the way, Vito, I've never met you. Nice to meet you. Um, Everybody's working on this. We're yeah, right. On this. <laughs> now, this has you. been, this, this, needless to say, this is another part of our project. A very expensive part of our project, which was going to solve all the problems in the swimming pool. And now we've shut the swimming pool down, it's been broken, it's been, and rumors all over the place. But the bottom 
I guess from what I can gather in talking to people who know what they're talking about, and I know you're aware of it, is that there have been a problem with the bearings. And I was told by someone we all know who told me this, my dear friend, that the unit was installed improperly by the contractor and that it's off kilter a little bit, and that's why the bearings are, are wearing out. Have we ever, has anybody ever heard that? No. Um, not that the unit was installed crooked, but there had been discrepancies with the operation manuals that were provided via Dectron, the company that made right. the unit, and via the bearing companies that supplied the bearings. They have vastly different greasing schedules, and just as we're peeling the onion back, you know, there's just more layers as to what's causing these bearing failures. But again, if this were, Vito, if this were you, if you got a big pool in your house and you, you spent all this money to put this unit in and it starts failing, you're going to say, what's going on? And I think that's what we have to say on behalf of the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. We spent all this money to solve this problem. Why are we spending all this money now? You guys are spending all this money now to fix this brand new state-of-the-art, we're never going to have a problem with the pool unit. It makes no sense. And, uh, again, I think it's another okay. question. So uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that Van Zelm has not yet done that part of their report. Is that correct? So, they've, they've, so Van Zelm has been helpful in, in bringing together the people we need to to get to where we are now to get it back on, up and running. But right, you are but correct. They did, not, they did not include that part. Uh, their um, final reflections and recommendations on the Dectron unit in the report that we received just before Thanksgiving. Okay. So um, we'll, we're still waiting for that, okay. um, and the ad hoc committee will again um, review that. And I think it's also important. I, I agree with you, Matt, 100 percent. I also want to make sure we we understand that um, Jerry's been very involved um, about the Dectron part as well. is very aware of that, and, and okay. just as just as the other other HVAC parts that we were talking about, we're looking to engage his um, involvement in that as well. Right. One last issue. Again, I think it's for Vito. You weren't around, Vito, when this happened, but prior to the project starting, our boilers were going crazy. They were junk. <laughs> the guy who installed them previously installed junk. It was European. They couldn't get them. We got all these stories. We get all these stories all the time, but they, they couldn't have been more than 10 years old, and boilers should last more than 10 years. Anyway, so we moved this up. This is even before Bob, of course. We moved this up. We took, I don't know how we did it. We funded it, Tony, if you remember, mm -hmm. and we had three brand-new boilers put in. Are those working sufficiently, or are you having problems with those? They have been working sufficiently while I've been here. Yeah. Right before I came in, they had some replacements on them that I believe were covered by the manufacturer. Okay. But as, I, don't, I don't want to speak too loud, but yeah. right now, I've had no problems with them. So as far as you're concerned, oh, you're, yes. you're happy with them? Oh, yeah. They're, okay, performing, okay. All right. Just want to make sure. So I, I guess there's more discussions to be had in the week. But again, this is no reflection on the Board of Ed, on the superintendent, on Al. Uh, we've got a, my dear friend Jim involved, which is the best thing we could do because he's, uh, he knows this. He, he was there for the air quality and the changing can of the, the filters. I, I'm sorry, just maybe formally. Yeah. I'm sorry if I didn't do that already. That's okay. So Jim Sisa, who is our independent um, uh, consultant and also obviously during the day, he works in Amity. <laughs> um, Vito Aspara, our facilities manager. Al Pulo, our business manager and director of operations. Um, and you have some board of ed. And, and, I have, and I have James Crawford, our technology director, yeah. who even though he's operating there, he, he puts all the technology part of it together and, and guides all of that. Margaret's yep. here and Lynn, and I can't see the other person. Nope. Hi. Yeah. Well, back there. <laughs> Hi. Thank you all. all right, so again, my only point is that we did this project, $13 million. We expected not to have all these issues. You expected not to have all these issues. You shouldn't have had the problem with not knowing how things were operating. There's just more to be more to be found out, and uh, that's my only point. Well, let's do something. Right. Yeah, exactly. So I, I guess we can let them go. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have something, but yeah, it doesn't pertain to you guys. Okay. You can stay if you want. The question is, <laughs> have we have we had the contractor back, and have we had? John Rice, uh, I forget their names. So I well, John, John Rice was the, the engineer. Yeah, yeah right. Well, he was the our owner's to... rep or something. So the two parties that worked on this for us, they've been, they've they're been aware of this. Have they, they been back? On. Okay, what's their position on this? Well, I think I haven't gotten the final Van Zell right. report yet. Told no, them. I know. That's our position. But what's their position? They did everything right? So before we go to them. Oh, so we haven't gone to them. 
I don't think so. We haven't said to them that we have this problem. They know that we have the problem. They know about I think that. they're aware. They they're have been aware made of the aware problem. that we have a problem. I guess it's called on notice. Yes. Right. Yes, they are. That's on notice. And yes. that's just pretty Correct. much as we've done so far because we're waiting for the final what okay. happened and you know why and if as much as we can get it. Okay. So well, unfortunately, I, the, I don't have an answer. I guess the pool that's a separate contractor. Mm -hmm. right? That's what's yeah. called that. Uh, yeah. not the There's still the ESG. Huh? It was the ESG. It was. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for your attention to all that. Very nice. See you in a while. See you in a while. Okay. <laughs> sure. Happy holidays. Thank you. Do something. Who is fiddling like she's like grown bird? Flying solo tonight? Flying solo. Good. Mr. Good. Miller, no yes. opening. By the way, thanks for the uh, the tree looks great. Yes, it came out really good. The new tree looks a lot nicer than yeah, the old nice. tree. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. We're going to watch that grow. Yeah. Cracked. Split. I cracked about Split. eight feet down. Was it hit by lightning, you think? No, the, the top from the wind and everything. When they get that old, they, they just snap off at the top. So basically it was held up by a two-by-four firm. Probably four or five years, uh -huh. and then the but this tree will grow two to three feet a year. Oh, really? So it's gonna it's gonna yeah, jump pretty great. quick. As long as there's a tree. Yeah. And there's okay. lights on it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the main calm. There's lights on it. I, I know he's doing. Good. I know he's doing. <laughs> get there. Everything's good. All right, just to give you a little heads up here, um, we had our busiest year last year at 522 calls. As of we are as of uh, today, well, with the exception of the one that just went by, we were at 735 calls, and we still have the whole month of uh, December to go. So we're 40 percent, more better than 40 percent above where we were last year. And Your numbers are we're calendar years. No. Uh, the way this goes, it's calendar, calendar years. Yep. So 735 last year. At this time, we were at 469. So just to give you a heads up. And um, staff hours alone last year uh, to uh, the end of October, we're at 3,831 staff hours. Uh, to the end of October this year, we're at 8,004 hours. So it's more than 50% of where we were last year. So any, uh, any incident that the fire department gets uh, dispatched to? Yep, that's a call. So there was no fire. <laughs> we still have to go. Why'd they go? So when, uh, I think my alarm went off. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't home. I don't know. <laughs> so you do house fires, you do car accidents, you do house wires, fires, car down. accidents, wires, oh. um, extra uh, carbon yeah, monoxide yeah. calls. Uh -huh. They were up at the, they were up when the guy got shot on uh, Roman Road. Yep. <laughs> we assisted them. So a lot of um, yeah, departments, interagency the flooding assistance. Right. Flooding, what? flooding when basements. Yeah, flooded. we had the flooding call. We had uh, we had a lot. We've been having a lot of weather um, incidents, especially over the last eight years. Um, weather incidents are way up this year, but uh, motor vehicle accidents are up this year. We've had a lot of house fires this year, a lot of structure fires, more than any more, more than in any year past, as far as I can remember, at least for 20, the last 24, 25 years. And um, so it's not one particular thing that spiked, it's it's across the board, really. So, um, the first page, engine seven, this is um, the engine we have that we got in 2015. We are still paying for it. So we have to pay for next year and the year after. So the number is 158, 176. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to move. Yeah, go right on. No questions on it. Um, 
Um, Edge of three is the next one. This is the one that we've been talking about and we're going to be coming to the Board of Selectmen next week. Um, is to replace the 1989 FMC. Uh, it's the backup engine, plus it's also an engine that goes to all brush fires, um, relay pumping. It's got a lot of purposes. It goes up quite a bit. Um, and we'll be coming to the Board of Selectmen and looking to um, move forward on it uh, this month, actually. So we're going to hopefully buy this through the HGAC contract. Houston Galveston contract. It's just like the state of Connecticut contract. Basically, everybody they all go out to bid, and the numbers are set um, on these trucks. So there's no need to really go out to bid. And then once we go through the board of selectmen, I, I believe we have to go to the board of finance, and we're good to go. So hopefully, we can order this one and get this one off the plate. So when would you get this one if you ordered uh, it? If we were to buy this, if we were to order it, say, this month, we wouldn't see delivery until next December. And the way it would work is we, if we pay it in the arrears, we wouldn't have a payment until the following December. So this payment so actually, even though we're here. showing 166 in FY20, we're probably not paying it until realistically 21, 22. Correct. So it's, it's going to be out. It's not necessarily this year. It's just we we don't know how. I don't know how to tell you guys we need to order a truck without because we we normally lease them. So I don't know how we would. So what we do is we just put a placeholder in just so we can see that we're ordering it this year. But even though the payment wouldn't be due for another year or two, we're most likely two years out. The air packs. Um, this is to what we replaced a couple of years ago. This is just a payment, just a lease payment on them. Engine nine. This engine um, is was like engine seven. This is the uh, engine that goes to motor vehicle accidents. It also assists at house fires. Um, this engine is going to be twenty five years old. And once we get through engine three, we're starting to spec out engine nine. We're having issues with it. Engine 7, when we replaced that, was 24 years old, and we had transmission issues, we had engine issues, we had pump issues. So we're at the end of its useful life, and we need to replace this. But once again, when we go to replace this, we probably won't have delivery. If we would say we were to order it next summer, we probably wouldn't see it until the following summer, early fall, and then the payment wouldn't be due until the year after that, to the following summer, fall. So... This truck is out there, so we put it in FY21. Realistically, the payment wouldn't be due until 22 or 23 at that point. Sean, do we have, yes. do we keep, um, I know these are old trucks, but I'm not saying for 32 or 25 years, but in recent history, do we keep maintenance logs of all these trucks? We do. Okay. Yep, we have to. So what's been wrong with OSHA, them, how they've yep, been OSHA fixed and, and all that? <coughs> We have to do annual DOT inspections, plus they go out for lube oil filters, they have to go for inspections, so we have to keep all that along, <coughs> with, the pump, along with the pump and certification. Or if one of the functions uh, fails and we fix it, we keep records. Yeah, we have to. Yep. Yeah. It's they're, it's actually all electronic now, but there's if we were to print it, they're binders. Okay. Where are those kept? You got them over there? Or? Yeah, they, they're actually electronically. So okay. all the repair tickets and everything, we have a data management system and they scan so, in so and there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Lucas 3.1 device. <coughs> this is a device that we purchased back in FY or uh, back in the area of about 2013, 2014. We bought the Lucas 2. That was the newest device. This device uh, we purchased. And we put on uh, Medic 44 at the time because it felt it was the best location for this device to go on. They've recently come out with a new Lucas device, the Lucas 3.1. It has a couple other, it has a couple different options where the Medic can adjust the plunger. Uh, this is a device that actually does CPR, it's automated. So instead of somebody standing over and doing chest compressions, and you have to really do it at the right depth, and you have to do it at the right speed, <coughs> and you got to keep that up. And if anybody's done CPR, to keep it up for a few minutes, you're actually totally drained, and you're not getting the actual complete depth 
There's been studies done on it. So this device actually does it for you. It straps on, it's a board that slides under, it's a device that comes on, and there's, a, there's basically a suction cup that comes down with an arm, and it actually pumps for you. So the old device, you would set it, and you turn it on, and it would do the compressions. It's not that old. We bought it about five years ago. Right. This is the year in 2013. Yeah, we, so. we did a demo on it. Yeah. yeah. The new device actually has more options on it. So we can, you mm -hmm. can control the speed. You can control the depth. So if you need to go a little bit deeper, if oh. you need to increase, if you want to decrease, and it has a logging feature where you can do a printout. You, you would take out the... Um, the memory stick can go out and you can print it out for the hospital. So it's got it's got a bunch of different options on it. The Lucas 2 device, it's been used quite a bit. Um, it has saved, uh, I know of three lives. Uh, people, one, one person in his early 30s, one person, I believe he was in his uh, mid 40s and the other one was uh, mid to upper 50s. So this device is paid for itself, no questions asked. But I believe, and the new unit would go on the medic unit. We'd put the new one on the medic unit. We'd take the old one and stick it on uh, the engine at the firehouse. So we could use it if we go to a call and we need it. We have a second one available. Um, the reason why we put it, I put it into the budget, because I think it's, even though we have really not a lot to do with EMS, I believe it's a critical piece that we should keep up on the technology and keep up on this, because... I mean, for eighteen thousand dollars, it's you can't put a. And the EMS put a doesn't on have one. Or, I'm sorry. EMS, they don't have one. EMS, we have we have the Lucas two on that car right now. So oh, that's it the is on that. But I what I think we should do is I think we should upgrade this year to the Lucas three point one, where it has a couple different options and features. This is something I, I don't think we really want to. I, I think it's. Beneficial to everybody in town. But so we outsource EMS, don't we? Emergency. Mm -hmm. We outsource that EMS. We do, but the medic goes, but the medic's going to everybody's house. And no, but I guess my point is, so we outsource it, but we bought that we do. system and put it there. They don't, we do. they they've don't never bought one it. or put one. We, it's our, it's our. You got money. it. We own it. On those, on those three patient, people that you saved, uh, what was the duration of the chest compression during the resuscitation? I don't have that information. I know they, I think they used one of them, I think it was last year, they used it all the way down to the hospital. Is there a liability issue if we have a, a, a two and the three point one is out there? The same way, why are you using an older system? No, the two is fine. We can stay with the two. I just, I think for the the improvements and different op the different options that the three point one has, I think we should. I think we should keep up on that and stay with that. I don't think. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the two. The two is working perfectly fine. But when we're dealing with somebody in cardiac arrest and we're using the device, I think it it's, it gives the medic and it gives the person more options and more um, chances. I do recall, I think, the association bought Lucas too, right? We did buy nice the Lucas to too. Town. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, technology. This is to replace the server at the firehouse. We had it in the budget last year. We, we took it out. Um, we, ha we have to upgrade. Uh, we're on a small business server. Um, small SBS is going away, so we have to upgrade. Um, we are working with Town Hall mm -hmm. on possibly going into a shared server that we can share services with. So even though that number is where it is, that number, if we do a shared uh, server, that number would actually come down because we would, we're basically doing redundancy on both sides. So there, there would be savings on that, but we, we just don't know where um, Town Hall's um, plan is right now and right. we're waiting to hear back from that right hopefully we'll know in another month probably another month yeah the aerial um we put that in fy22 um it's to replace the um uh the 1992 that uh we purchased uh actually two years ago almost so that would be the next truck after engine nine R201, this is the fire marshal vehicle. 
It's a 2008 Ford uh, Expedition, be 12 years old by FY20, and usually um, we would replace the vehicle at that point. So right now the vehicle is working fine. Um, not to say in another year or so, it won't be. So we'd be looking, we're looking for half the vehicle in FY20 and the other half in FY21. So the fire marshal needs that capacity for equipment and so yeah, forth. Yeah, he carries, there, I mean, yep, he he carries all the equipment that he has. That's a big vehicle. Gear, so. SCBA, uh, all his investigating stuff, shovels, everything. So that's the reason he needs that yeah. big vehicle. Yep. And what's the year and the mileage on that? I don't have the mileage. Uh, it's 2008, though. 2008. That's right. Oh, yeah. It does have some rot, not a lot, but it does have some. Mm. Now, do we buy those trucks new off of some Usually buy them off a of state contract or something? Yeah, usually buy them off state contract. Do we ever look at, we bought, like, we I've been dying a, to ask this about every piece we of equipment used, um, and every vehicle we talk about. We did buy a used animal controls, use? we bought a used animal control vehicle. And yeah. that worked for the department, so we have purchased used vehicles before. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just something so to think about. We work with the department, and if it works for the department, then we would look into it. Certainly. Yeah. Then it may not even be cheaper if we're getting a great price off of some. I don't know. It's just mm -hmm. something to explore. I think. Mm -hmm. The other thing, we were talking about a used vehicle just for the fire department for a minute. The reason why it's not really feasible, like a vehicle like this, is because we have to outfit it with lighting. Uh, emergency lights, um, radios, so all that costs money to put on and then install. And if we say we get six years out of the vehicle, then we would have to strip it all out. So it, it and the way the new vehicles are keep changing, some of the lights won't fit on a newer vehicle. So there, there's there's a cost to all that also. And usually we we run the vehicles that we have basically into the ground. <coughs> to the mix and see if it makes sense. It may not make sense to buy a used car. But. <clears throat> so these vehicles are only used for town use. They're not used for personal use. No, I think they're yeah, they're well, they're they're town use vehicles. They're town vehicles. No, but he drives it home, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah he, you need to have the car with you 365. It's basically 24 is, hours. Is it, yeah. Is it Okay. So he drives it home. Does he drive it to go shopping too? I mean, is he used for personal use? He's <laughs> just stop and shop. He, I mean, he's on call twenty four hours a day, yeah, seven he, days a week. So answers, where yes. he is, we 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 got to call him, and he's got to respond in. Yeah, yeah he has the ability shop. to. I mean, he's a call. He's got to go. Yeah, I mean, if he's yeah, going he away, he's not taking the he's not that's taking the vehicle. Yeah, okay, and finally the uh, the, the air, air compressor. This compressor um, is to replace the air compressor at the firehouse. This, uh, the air compressor that we're talking about, it, with the apparatus, we have to keep the air up on the trucks. So when a call comes in, the guys jump into the trucks, they turn them on, they can drive forward. If we didn't have the air compressor and the trucks were not plugged in and they're constantly built, built up with air, what happens is when you turn the truck on, you have to wait four or five minutes for the air to build up in the brakes before you can move forward. It's not like your vehicle where you get in, you start it, and you drive. They have big drums that have to fill up with air before you can move forward. So the trucks are constantly built up with air. So when they when they get used, they come back, they get plugged in, they sit, and it's also used for air in the building, like uh, air ratchets, air guns, stuff like that. So this compressor is at least 15 years old. It was actually in the old firehouse, and it was in the old firehouse at least five, six years before that. So this compressor is at its end of its life. It's making a real god off a racket right now. I'm just hoping we can get to July to replace it, but we may be back, and we may have to replace it before then. So um, that's what that's what our budget is. Okay. Okay, any questions? We should be coming up on no. the anniversary of the Inwood Road Fire. Right? Was it in December last year? No, today was two years ago the JCC qualifier tonight, yeah. and then Inwood Road was January. It was two years. It was January. Two years tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Inwood Road was January. January fifth, because yeah. this was December fifth. That was January fifth. Should have a party for that one. Yeah. I, I, dro cool. I, was, I drove through it that night. Oh my god. Did see how many road fires? Was it? Inwood Road. Oh, Inwood. When it was like Inwood. twenty below. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, that was yeah. Cool. it was cold. Oh my there. god. Yeah. 
This fire hydrant was a block of ice, my lord. Yeah. So were the helmets. Yeah. And all their gear, they took yeah. it off and it was covered in ice all over the fire hydrant. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Any other questions for Sean? No. no. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. By Beth Hall? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Let's mix it up. I have a first. That's a first? I don't think, yeah, I think so. I <laughs> like this is on behalf of the residents and on behalf of the town and the Board of Selectmen. Good evening. This is so funny. Uh, Beth Heller for Selectman, Six Hunters Ridge. <laughs> what else? <laughs> Sorry. It's so late and it's a tired, tired day. So you have in your, what? I think she should be there. <laughs> this, is her, this is her plan. Yep. With Betsy and other folks who've worked hard on it. And um, I'm open to any suggestions at any point. These are just numbers that we tried to come up with with our best guesstimates. And we will take any suggestions and clearly they're depending on our budget, you can do what you want with it, or we can do what we want with it. Um, as FY20 is the, um, this is the, you have in your packet, I guess, the whole photos of all the, my thoughts and everything else, and um, this is called the Town Center Campus, Campus Beautification Plan, and in FY20, we're requesting $90,000. Um, do you want me to go into the whole, for, for, no, for, you don't want to hear this, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why we need a shed. I have a whole, for the new folks perhaps, just a quick rundown. Yeah, why don't you run through that? Sure, okay. A brief recap of how we got here. There was a fire um, at the old, no, that's, wait a minute. Uh, after the fire that burned the old firehouse in 2006, there had been a committee created by First Selectman Ed Sheehy in 2007 known as the Cruff Committee, the Committee to re Recommend Uses for the Former Firehouse. I asked my staff to go through the documents that we found the following description was given by then Fire Chief Andrew Esposito. He says, when the new fire station building committee was given the charge to build a new facility of 20,000 square feet, it was understood that the 5,000 square feet that was removed uh, could be found at the old firehouse. After review over the past month, this is way back when he said this, they need approximately 3,000 square feet of storage of extra fire department supplies. They did an inventory at that point and came up with, they didn't need the five, but they were comfortable with three. So at that point, um, the committee, as I said, was created. We um, had a budget, I believe, of $180,000 at the time. And the pad which was created, which I'm sure you have all seen behind the new firehouse, is uh, 42 by 42 square feet, and you could put uh, vehicles full of water on that pad. It is, there's so much rebar in there. It was because it was so close to the wetlands, our building official felt that it really had to be supported with that much rebar, which thus ate up $150,000 of the then budget, leaving us a total of $30,000. So since the pad went in, um, nothing has happened for whatever reason, and in order to finalize the restoration of the now old firehouse where bay one would have the antique fire truck and, and provide storage swing base swing space in bay two we talked about this at the board of selectmen meeting um we thought if and bay three i guess is going to be wreck at this point and then if we're lucky amity transition program will go upstairs if everything works out as we hope um we have to finish the shed to get the stuff that they're storing in bay one and bay two into the shed. So we're hoping at some point we can find $90,000 for the shed project. So that explains that. I did meet with, um, I'm sorry. yep, yep, yep. No, I'm, I'm so tired, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> FY20, 90,000. Yeah. You don't, you don't mean 90,000 to complete that shed. That will put up a shell. Because oh, they were, they've been looking for a there. lot more money than that. That's correct. Years, so this just, is a start. Okay. So we can perhaps I just store some things that are not ten temperature sensitive. And so the the balance of the two ten over here is where we're getting to. No, that's other stuff. Oh. Read below. Okay. FY twenty one. 
All right, then forget that. But then how? Do, so if we do a ninety thousand dollars shell right now, uh -huh. what's the plan after that? Because I don't like these half I these plans that. now um, and then a plan later and a plan later and you know. So I'm not trying words, to be difficult. But sure, what's no, the plan I understand, after? and I think that the plan is to think about perhaps finding money in a budget or. So there would be more money. If, Needed you have to have shirt. it. Yeah, maybe we should put the whole thing in there. I don't know. We don't have a final number. Well, I think we, we should at really least do. know what the total number would right. be before we say, "Hey, here's ninety mm -hmm. grand," and then sure, then we, we got to give another to... two hundred grand. Right. I, we have we have to go out to bid. Okay. Obviously, with some that's we just have a my suggestion because I know they've been looking for more money than that for that shit. For Absolutely. Years, for years. Obviously, it depends on how much we put into it and what okay. we choose to do as a board so, right. of selectmen. What we want to recommend. So I, I, I kind of would just like to see okay. a final number. That's all. Okay. Okay. Thanks. You got it. Thank you. Know, you. Are we paying for the old fire department to be climate controlled right now? Is it like is there heat in there? there yes. Is. Yep. Have to. Yeah. What's that cost us? So. To store, it's just to store the hoses and their water, right? Yeah. Well, it's not hot there's, here. There's it's, not, um, it's not, you know, 80 degrees in there. It's there's pretty cold, uh, There's pallets of water in there. I'm curious. Yeah. I'll tell you. And, I, got, um, I got it right here. Still running that old boiler that needs to be yep. replaced? Yep. It's still and it's, 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 it looks like guess. there's bubble gum Sorry, and, you know, the old yeah, washing machine with the thing is going ba 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 It's real scary. <laughs> It's real scary. So, so, so what's the urgency to mm -hmm. do this now? The well, transition program. Yeah, we got to get well. Not only that, but we want to finish the the fire happened in two thousand six, and in urgency in getting some of the fire department storage out of the, the old firehouse is where they're going to put it. Well, well, I mean, I don't know. That's that's, that's actually a decent question. Is there nowhere else they could put it? Over there, well, we did. Seven thousand square feet. We did ask. I, I, I did question. have a meeting with the fire commission chairman, who said he was going to do a, need, a um, an assessment of everything that's being stored over there. It's possible some of those items could go in other places. You're absolutely correct. But we do need a shed. It was agreed upon as part of the project in 2007, and we all voted for it. And it's just been sitting there. there they, we have a, either that or we have a pad that's just sitting there for the rest of our lives with nothing in there. Yeah. They're going to have to stay in bay, one of the bays, in the and old fire. We spent so much money on this pad; it's just sitting there. Yeah, no, I, the I remember the whole thing because you know. this has been since I've started six years ago. Right. Dwight brought the one point five million dollars or whatever, and part of it was that. Right. And my the number rolls around in my head it was like three hundred thousand they wanted for the shed. That's because, not going to cost three hundred thousand. Okay, I'm going to maybe, tell you maybe that. Maybe not, but I just think we right. need to know <clears throat> yeah. what they want. You know. Right. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm not 100% there in terms of... Because it's, it's fine. I mean, I don't know if it's really a beautification issue, but I think... Well, where else am I going to put it? I don't used know. To, I know. It's, <laughs> well, to me, it's itself. going to make um, the old firehouse beautiful for town use. Okay. So I'll go, I'll go with that. I've got that number. Is that a good five answer? Thousand. I'll go along. <laughs> 5,000. 5,000. 5,000 a year. Oh, a year. Sorry, I must have <laughs> <laughs> what? The window's open? Okay. So, but my, but my, my concern is we have this $500,000 ski grant, which we have to use up, otherwise we'll lose it. But in order to use this $500,000 ski grant, we have all of these other expenses that we have to incur. Finishing the firehouse, making, doing this shed. Mm -hmm. you know, so we're getting free money, but it's costing us a lot to get that free money. Mm -hmm. That's but your opinion. Okay. That is my well. Cool. That's my opinion. Good. Thank it's you. It's also a fact. Thank that you we for have that. To spend this money. Okay. <laughs> that's not yep. an opinion. That's the fact, and it's a choice. I mean, it's sure. a choice. That's why I asked you what the urgency was. Mm -hmm. Investment. What's that? The other the investment. The other urgency is assuming we can, if if we indeed can, uh, set up the program with the with the yeah. Amity. Right. We will start. There will be a return on the investment. That's the hinge pin for this whole project. So, I understand that, but we right. haven't gotten a reply from them yet, as I understand. Uh, well, they uh, they oh, were yeah. going to discuss it, as I understand, this project at the okay. last Amity board meeting, and they had uh, other pressing matters. <laughs> and so, um, we actually, Tony and I met with uh, the did. new superintendent today, yep. and um, we, there, made we're, we're, we made some progress. We made some progress. I'll just 
she's brand new, the poor thing. You know, she's lovely, but Something here. She's, you know, she knows how, how we feel about it, and she's going to look into it, I think, and you know, begin with. I feel duty to ask anyone who comes and asks for money to give them a hard time. Yes. No problem. I love it. Yeah. That's what we like about you. Even the first selectman. I'm very democratic that way. Yeah. Okay. With a small D, right? <laughs> okay. So that's just that. And have, you know, do what you want. Or we will together. But I just want to fill you in on that one. Um, some of these things I will tell you going forward. For example, um, FY21, the town would like to expand the sidewalk. Amity High School to the library. There may be grant money for all of this. I'm just putting these in as things that we want to try to accomplish. Okay. And maybe Amity will help us with it as part of the transition program, the kids walking across the street, something like that. Who knows? We'll figure it out. Well, that would make sense. It yeah, sure would. I completely agree with you. I mean. okay. And, you know, again, these numbers are preliminary numbers sure. in the budget. And um, I can give you, uh, if you want me to read all about how I got here or just... No, we can read it. Okay, cool. Read it. All right, thank you. And then FY22, um, the town wants to upgrade asphalt sidewalks, five foot wide concrete, concrete at the library, center building, and grove. <clears throat> this is all, there's a, there's a map in here if you had a chance to take a peek with some of the thoughts that we have. You know what, if we don't have the money and, and we're, we, we can't do these things, it's just more a nice thing to make it a better town. And as everyone sort of said tonight, let's have a better town center and encourage folks to use our town. So this is just some of the stuff we came up with. FY23, the town would expand um, Wi-Fi to cover Alton's town center campus to improve service for residents and staff. So these are just, and the supporting documents for most of this in your packet. I don't want to hold you up because it's 10 past 8. And so that's what I'm thinking about. We got the wayfinding signs, do we? Yeah. Where is that? Okay, I have some on that. You've got 48, 6, or 20. Right, that, the interesting thing about yeah. that, um, this was something that started before I came into the office, but um, you know, do you guys remember about the wayfinding signs? Yeah. Yeah, and it was a project that was, it was completed with leftover money from a, um, a grant. We got to do sidewalks down in the lower district, mm -hmm. and then, um, unfortunately, the funding was not part of the study, so... How we get to pay for these signs, we could perhaps encourage businesses to do it as they come in if they want to be more friendly and things like this. But um, um, it's hope that we're hoped that we can find donors for some of these signs. That's why we put in the $48,000 for that. And uh, we have thoughts. So I can, I can get, answer any questions or go into this further, but I just sort of wanted to give you a overview okay. of where, where I am thinking. Here we go. No, 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 this is, I'm not, I'm yeah. not attacking you. Guys. That's, you're not at all. I don't feel attacked. Have, I'm no, as no, happy no. as I can have, be here. I'd love being over here. You have a picture here of a very lovely sign and a, a flowered item that says Morris Road. Can you tell me where it is in there? Um, it's your first picture. Uh, first picture. Okay. Page. After, That's the wayfinding. Right. After the wayfinding sign number. Oh. Yes, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. like a sample yeah. Um, yeah. sign. Mm -hmm. it is. Well, is this what? Well, it says Morris Road, yeah. and it I is. don't know any so place in, in Woodbridge. Well, you know, a lot, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the folks here may not have been around when we had that big presentation. I can... We had all the sign. Maybe we have a... We have electronic. We, can get it. we do. Yeah, we, yeah, we send, send it out yeah. to everyone. Yeah. This was the recommendation yeah. from the committee, and I quite frankly, I remember maybe you too, Joe, when we got that yeah. report. I was astounded at the cost of these signs. Yeah, the, the numbers are high. The, the, the signs are beautiful. They're beautiful. Yeah. The idea is great. The numbers are very high. But, mm. yeah. but so your question is? And my question is: This is not a picture of, of, of Woodbridge. Per se, this sign is for the hardest rendering. Not having taken it, I can't answer that, okay. but I, I, I um, yeah, it's Morris Road. It's, 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 yeah, it's Morris Road. Road. That's it. That's Route 63. Yeah, take a left on that's the, far, road. the last road in Woodbridge. Why we would we put a sign like that what? up there, but what? maybe we would. Well, Welcome to Woodbridge. <laughs> why wouldn't you take it? I mean, but why would you want to go down Morris Road to take it? Why would there be a wayfinding sign? I don't that. I don't know. It's more of a welcome to Woodbridge. Would it go in the middle of Morris Road? Because it's the last road in Bethany. So this is Bethany. So it connects to Bethany. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a walk. It is a corner of the town. Thank you, Joe. You should be sitting here doing this part. <laughs> you want to see me really get attacked? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Does anyone have any questions? That's what Tony will send it around. Yeah. They're a nice signs. Yeah. They're very They're nice. They're lovely, but oh. unfortunately, for the one of the biggest signs, they're twenty-five, thirty, fifty thousand dollars 50000 I mean, You know, maybe we could get sponsors. Sign. That's what We've I said. We've looked into that also. That's what, yeah, business yeah. Spot, yeah. That's what I just those. said. Yeah. Business yeah. sponsors yeah. or, yeah. DDC like they do in Orange. In the wayfinder. Yeah. Representative for I'm sorry, yes. I've lost control uh, of the DDC room was involved in the wayfinder. Hey, guys. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Yeah. I EDC had been room. involved. I know they had a representative involved, and I know in speaking with that individual, they indicated the costs associated with this were significantly more than they than they felt was required. In other words, they felt they could get signs of the quality that they were looking for for far less than what the recommendation was. Those were top of the line from a different vendor. From a different vendor, well, they did nice not have to go right. with this vendor to right. to, to, exactly. to to do what we were looking to do. Just sure. steal their design and go. Because that kind of, as I recall, Joe, it stopped us in our tracks. When we yeah, the, cost. the numbers are pretty. Yeah, we've tried to replace a couple of signs. I know the one better. over at the Fitzgerald property, the speed limit sign. We designed it and paid for it. Um, less. It was quite less expensive. Right. The five reduce your speed to five miles an hour. Right. Town did it, and it was a lot less money. That was the first way for me sign I'm aware of that we tried to match the the, the, the look of it design. without having it cost ten thousand dollars for this size sign. Mm. <laughs> Any other questions for our first selection? Good job, Beth. You're good, Beth. I'm doing great. Okay, You're good. Thank you. Good evening. Thanks for you listening cut, to cut me. Cut your budget twenty percent. <laughs> <laughs> Would you help me? I'll do it. <laughs> Come on in, and tomorrow I'll do it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. That's it. Is that it?